You were born in Pathan Court, and then you grew up in Vijayawada. You were about to go to an engineering school, and then you left everything and joined a flying school. How did that happen? When I went for flying, it was um, I just passed my twelfth class, and my dad uh, made me join an engineering college. I went to college for a couple of months. I still wanted to become pilot, so I kept looking out for a way. I saw an ad on the newspaper. Both, like my mom and dad, were shocked. They knew I wanted to become pilot, but they didn't know how serious I was about it. And I'm like, I'm applying for this, and my parents are like, kind of like stepping back, like you really want to do this, and it's a little uh, difficult for them financially and socially through that time to accept and let me go for it. Luckily, um, that year in whole of India, that flying academy where I joined, uh, only 24 people were selected in that year, and I got through the thing. So a lot of resistance, social resistance for my parents. So. Honestly, it was a bigger decision for my parents. You sending a girl and putting that kind of money on a girl. For my dad, it was uh, very difficult to pay at that time, that kind of fees. Aviation is an uh, expensive sector. Apart from all of it, okay, finally we reached academy where I'm supposed to join. There also people said there are no jobs for last seven years. And um, he's like, he doesn't know what to do. And it's very difficult for him to put that kind of money. And then people are saying there are no jobs. And he looked at me and all I said is, Dad, I don't know about job. I just want to fly and he let me actually just fly. <laughs> that support has given me a lot of courage for the problems I faced much later and through the struggles what I've gone through later. That strength from the family has made me or pushed me uh, to go through all of it much more and to reach this stage today. As you said that you come from a very humble background in from Vijayawada to you know the flying school to a big city, you faced a culture shock. How did you deal with that? My class 4th to 12th, I was in Vijayawada. Very simple school, um, Kendri Vidyalaya. But not much people were speaking or communicating in English. Everybody used to speak in Telugu at that time, so would I. And there's a lot of pronunciation differences between what you speak in the schools of South to I was facing a cultural difference between my batchmates now who are from Bombay and Delhi uh, with the different backgrounds. So I was made fun of my few pronunciations and grammar mistakes and all which I would make initially. And a lot more, of course, cultural things. But one thing what I stuck by it and held me till now in life is it's okay not to know, but it's not okay not to learn. <laughs> so I didn't know a lot of things. I'm not born with anything, but I never backed out from learning. So initially I used to feel very bad. I would go into cocoon. Uh, okay, I didn't do right this. I didn't say that right. But a little later I started coming out of it and I started asking people like, Oh, okay, what, I'll wait till they laugh and finish it off and then I'll say, okay, no problem, now you're done with, just let me know what is right. And my whole focus was on what is right. And even they helped me learning. So it kind of went from like not knowing to learning so fast. And that is so true because these days, you know, youngsters always struggle to fit in. I would say not only they should fit in, but they should get better and stand out. And that will happen when they start learning rather than copying, you know. You should have to learn what is best and how best you can do and get the best out of yourself. So there are struggles everywhere. You have to choose your struggle. What is the best part of flying for you? Uniform. <laughs> the best part. I love the uniform. I uh, take pride in wearing my uniform. Aviation sector is still male dominated. I know that things are changing. But since you've been in the field for over a decade now, how have you seen the field change? It's changed a lot. From the time I have joined, there were hardly any women pilots around. I joined Air India, but I was deputed to Air India Express. Uh, I was the only girl in my batch among Air India batch which we joined. And uh, maybe I was second or third girl in the airline. To now, I'm seeing a lot of women flying around. And I can very proudly say that the world average of women commercial pilots are about 3 to 4% globally. To in India, we are almost 14%. Wow. That's like... Three, yeah. three times, yeah. It's a big deal. Yes, it is a big deal, but um, I also would like to um, say why is it we are doing better than other parts of the world is the support system we have. Let it be our parents, even uh, household help what we have. So globally, I think that support system is not much around in the world to what we have, like really, this is supporting our women to do so much better. Yeah. There has been many gender stereotyping stories. Have you ever faced any such incident? 
Okay, honestly, I think uh, there are um, difficulties which women fe uh, faces every field, not only my field and specifically travel related, then we have things to take care of more than men, I guess. Mm -hmm. And uh, stereotyping does happen everywhere. It happens equally everywhere. All women has to face it. So I would not like say no to it. But has it ever been like some passenger stories that you've heard that, you know, a woman is flying? What if no, that way actually? Uh, no, it's the other way. You know, passengers have been very happy to see me to fly. Sometimes they get like on the international flights, long haul flights. They're just counting the number of stripes. You know, it's like it's a three, four. Is she really the captain? Not because of women, also because of age, you know, she's like, oh, she looks too young to go to like <laughs> New York flight direct. So they're like literally counting. I know when they're looking, you know, a lot of time they're just trying to see it's three or four, it's three or four. And they come up to me and speak also yeah. and they're like very surprised, but mostly pleasantly surprised 90% of the time. You fly long haul flights, like 16 hour flights. And how do you deal with, you know, cockpit stress? With the job related, we have a lot of things to deal with, especially um, a pre-flight preparation goes a lot more time. We have to prepare sleeping much before the flights because we have to leave on odd timings, international flights, 1.30, 2 o'clock in the night is departure. Then you get into the, the peak sleeping time, what Indian time would be, where we actually have to be very active and working. So the preparation starts like 48 hours before the flight, in fact. So we start taking proper rest. We're sleeping in the daytime. We're dealing with our body to making sure we're resting uh, in the daytime, even though, you know, you can't fall off completely to sleep, but we're resting as much as possible through the day so that we're okay for the flight, complete rest. And then we go for the flight. So we're well prepared much in advance. And then, of course, we fly and uh, we do have two sets of crew in ultra long haul flights. So we also get to rest a bit in the aircraft after the flight. Yeah, it's a lot of things to deal with. Jet lag is what it is. Yeah. So workout and just resting it out helps a lot. Yeah, you've been, you know, flying for so long. Do you still get jet lag? Very, very. I just came from San Francisco mm -hmm. and um, that's like really it takes a lot of time to recover from jet lag. Any tips to how to deal with jet lag? Sleeping when you're feeling sleepy and working out will help your body to get back to the normal biological clock faster. India has a shortage of pilots and that is why many airlines are suffering. How do you think India can, you know, bridge this gap? There are a lot of pilots in under training right now and there are people who are looking for jobs. It's just the experience. So through the period, the gap will be like covered automatically. And aviation sector is growing, which is a very good thing. Surely we can do a lot more the awareness part, you know. There's still not much awareness. There have to be a lot of awareness about not only uh, aviation, but other fields where women are working. To be known that these are also your options. What happens in most of the places, which happen in my case, is also like the two options. You become doctor or engineer. Yeah. That's like the maximum. So the awareness campaigns about where women are working, like what you're all doing right now, that where we are working and it's reaching out to people will definitely be helpful. Are there any women you look up to? Definitely. There are women I look up to. Uh, they are from my own family. Um, I've seen my grandmother doing like, such a like, good hard work and where she has reached in her life to my own mother has been always my idol. To my sister, uh, she had uh, like a lot of struggle to where she reached in her life. She had to go through a little tough time after marriage. Um, she went through separation and she already had a year old baby to now she is a dentist in US. So even after going through such tough time and uh, she pulled herself out of it and she studied again, she did so well. That requires a lot of strength, which she has shown. And my mom supporting her through all of it, taking care of the child to support her has been, uh, um, I mean, there's a lot of um, inspiration in my own family to look up yeah. to. What's next for you then? A lot more. Uh, I've done BSc Aviation and uh, LLB. And I've also graduated on keyboard and I've learned a bit of singing and... Uh, most forms of dance. Is this like you want to be a master of everything? No, I, whenever I get time, I just like learning. What are you learning right now? I am learning kickboxing right now.